And welcome everybody here in Twitch Chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono black control in Historic in Best of One. So we're going to be doing this in, in Best of One today, even though um, I do have a Best of Three deck list for this as well. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to link both of those um, underneath the uh, or just in the video description. So I'll have the the Best of One deck that we're playing right now and the Best of Three list. The difference really, I'm, we'll just play the same main deck, but the difference is the sideboard. Uh, with best of one, we just want everything because we don't have, we do, you don't need a sideboard in best of one. So everything is going to be targets for Karn to grab all artifacts over here. And in best of three, you actually have like real sideboard cards. You know, like we'll have like another Legion's End and another Ritual of Soot and some Ashiok for the Field of the Dead matchup and, and so on. Um, so that's, that's the difference there. Um, the only way to play best of three right now is ranked. Um, we're up pretty high in Mythic right now. And this is kind of just a, a test deck that we're just, just wanting to test out and everything. And so um, we, we did like a, a vote there in the chat. And so we decided to um, we decided to just play in at best of one just to kind of try it out and everything at first. So th that's what we're going to be doing here. Um, but again, uh, if you like playing best of three, there's the uh, there's going to be a link to the list down below. Um, anyway, talking about our deck, yeah, it's mono black control. We got uh, two new cards in historic anthologies for this deck. We got Phyrexian Arena, which looks pretty awesome. Um, this deck could definitely be playing three Phyrexian Arena. I had seven seven uh, slots here between Mindstone, another new one, uh, to kind of speed us up, which our deck's pretty slow, so speeding up's important. Between Mindstone, Phyrexian Arena, Treasure Map, I had like seven slots, not exactly what you know, which one to play three, you know, I could see playing three Mindstone or three Phyrexian Arena. I decided to, to just kind of stick with the three treasure maps and, and only go to Phyrexian Arena, even though it's really good, just because our deck is very slow, takes a long time to win, and that one life um, over a long period of time can can be uh, kind of difficult to deal with. Uh, really, our, own way, our only way to gain life is with Dread Presence. Um, you know, we have to hit land drops, deal two to them we gain two that can offset a phyrexian arena but we don't really want to like start with like two phyrexian arenas early which if we were playing three maybe we draw two of them and that could that could uh, be pretty difficult um just even having two phyrexian arenas out so we're only going to play the two even though it's a really powerful card um besides that i i do like disfigure a lot in this format even though there there are certainly decks where disfigure is dead against so this is not really the best best of one card because this is something you may want to sideboard out but there's just a lot of small creatures you know all of the aggro decks disfigure is great against and then also the oko decks um, that are trying to go turn to oko having a disfigure for um their mana creature which it seems like they always have a turn one mana creature uh, because they have the four land or all four gilded goose and four once upon a time so disfigure is a pretty important uh, card to have because especially if you're on the draw you may not have two turns before your opponent's playing Oko. And so that's why we got Disfigures, Duresses. We, we got to have turn uh, turn one interaction there. But besides Oko, there's not just a lot of Planeswalkers in the format. And so it's it's not really... I don't really want to be playing Elder Spells and uh, Noxious Grasps in the main deck to be able to kill Okos um, on turn two. Because again, there's just not that many Planeswalkers overall in the format. But yeah, so we're trying to ramp with Mindstone, Treasure Map, get a lot of mana, uh, get us towards Golos. Golos is pretty important here because um, in Historic, this deck's all about Cabal Stronghold. So Golos goes and finds Cabal Stronghold for us. We That's why we're playing all these basic swamps. Like, we're not playing Castle Lock Twains because we need lots of basic swamps for Cabal Stronghold. Um, we could play Ca Castle Lock Twains in instead of Field of Ruin, but still, Field of the Dead's a very big card in this format. So I like having a couple Field of Ruins for Field of the Dead. And plus, Field of Ruin can get another Swamp in play, help us trigger Dread Presence again. Um, it's just a pretty good quality card. Um, but yeah, so we try to get lots of mana, and then whenever we have lots of mana, we can you know play Karn and then use Karn to go grab some of these heavy hitters in our sideboard. Um, you may notice I'm playing three Amulet of Safekeeping, I wouldn't even I would not be playing this in best of three, but just because we have 15 slots in best of one, I want this card because of again the field of the dead decks that try to go really wide with a whole bunch of zombies. Um, 
if we can get two of these in play, their zombies are O2s, because creature tokens get minus one, minus zero. The reason why I'm playing three instead of two, we only need two in play, but the reason why I'm playing three is because I don't want to just have like two of these amulet of safekeepings in play, and my opponent has, you know, like 30, 30 40 zombies because of escape shift, and then they use like a Teferi to bounce an amulet, and then they have lethal. So if we can just, you know, get three of them in play, then a Teferi bouncing one amulet wouldn't be wouldn't uh, be lethal because we'd still have two of them. So that's why I'm, I'm playing a third amulet of safekeeping. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's a good that's a good call there, GG Branch. We could have instead of that third one, we I guess we could play a uh, Crucible of Worlds to keep getting Field of Ruin back in the sideboard because we do just have extra sideboard slots. So that's that's a card that we could play as a Crucible of Worlds um, in here. We got three Spyglass for the Kethis matchup and a Grafdigger's Cage for the Kethis matchup, so they can't cast the the stuff in there. Um, in their graveyard, um, Stone Coral Serpent. If we need a blocker, another Golos over here, plus a Chromatic Lantern over here, so that if um, if we do have Golos in play, we can go grab Chromatic Lantern so that we can start activating Golos as well. And then, yeah, you see my removal, a, a cast down, a couple Legion's Ends for zombies, Cry of the Carnarium, Ritual. So it's one Contempt, three Murderous Rider, just because you know Rider's cheaper. We got a lot of fours. We'll have to kind of see how the format plays out if these are the specific um, removal spells to be playing because there's other options and everything. So this is just what I'm going with right now. But we'll kind of see how the format plays out and how these cards line up for us. But anyway, let's get let's get going to playing some games now. Hopefully that uh, helps explain our deck, what we're doing, and or like the card some of the card choices that we had here. And. Karn is pretty good against food, because you can tick up on your opponent's food and make it a 0-0 zero, zero, and just basically remove it from the battlefield. I'm playing 26 land, which honestly, best of one, we could probably just go to 25 because of the hand fixing. But I'm glad we have extra lands here now. So we need to draw one land, and then we play Ritual of Soot, and then hopefully we're good. Good ish. So come on, land. No. Come on, twenty six land deck. <laughs> we need one land and three draws. Oh, our first two were two bricks. This is the turn. Gotta have it. Mine's toad. Frustrating. All right, so five, six, seven. So they're attacking for seven here. The Footlight Fiend, after we kill that, is going to do an eighth damage. So we're at seven life right now. That's And they got all these cards. All right, we're down to five. That's good. Down to two. Well, if they don't kill us here, we can maybe start gaining life. Oh, really? They just literally just had the shock to kill us. Ugh. Well, we had three draws for a land to win that. <laughs> we did not get it. We just would have had the Mind Stone to turn earlier.
All right, so we have treasure maps. Mindstone to ramp us a little bit. Treasure maps to, you know, go find some swamps for us. We don't have any black mana. But that's okay. So I was kind of planning, like, if we would have drawn a land here, I would have played both treasure maps. But we did not draw lands. I'll still just play both treasure maps. We need to hit land drops. So we need to upkeep scry. Yeah, it's a cool card. Sorry, cool card. Land drop. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're doing. Yeah, it could be elves. Could be like elves splashing for distant memory, melody, memory. Okay, it is elves. All right, so now I'm gonna actually look for a sweeper. Now that we know we're playing against elves. Cool. So yeah, I could have killed the clan caller and kept them from doing that, but honestly, I didn't really mind them doing that too much. Six mana with Karn. It's not really anything to go grab with Karn, though. Obeys me. 
So to make sure I can stay alive, hopefully with two blockers. Yeah, we, we'd have more sweepers in, you know, in the sideboard, or just another one. Right now we have a, a you know, like two, or one Cry of the Carnarium, two Ritual of Suts, two Legion's End, that'd all be very good. Ah, uh, yep, we need the disc. Okay, yeah, so I'm still good. All right, so we have one one shot at this. Okay, well, Dread Presence. Well, that's... Okay, wait, so if I play Dread Presence... Dun dun, activate. I have to use my thing to activate. All right, so we're going to. Play this. This works out. another friend. So that works out. Clan callers out of here. Your view right now? Ooh. That is awesome. Have fun, Matthew, at the LSE game. Okay, the Beast Whisperer is in here. I'm not holding. I guess I'm not holding up this murderous rider to be able to kill the beast whisper. I probably could have if I would have used Cabal Stronghold earlier. Just start playing and earn some gold. Should I buy booster packs? Which one? Not that good at deck building. Um, basically, if 
if there's any deck that you that you want to like build towards, you know, like if you're looking at whatever deck you want to build towards, look at the rares. The rares are the most important thing. Look at what rares those uh, those cards come from. Like what set those rares come from. There we go. You will not threaten this world. Out of my lane. Alright, I guess we just start mowing down all the elves. Probably could have made some attacks this turn also. But it's okay. We're doing just fine. We're going to have a whole lot of Dread Presences. I can also move... If it doesn't look like we're going to have a land, which I, which, you know, like we're drawing two cards with Phyrexian Arena. Okay, yeah, we do have a land. I was going to say we could move the Helm of the Host over to Golos also. Yeah, this is his, this is historic. Yeah, we're kind of just running up the score now, probably, by just getting a bunch of Dread Presences in play. That's, that's kind of how our deck wins, though. But yeah, I probably should have made some attacks last turn. Oh, well. Yeah, um, I played an elf deck uh, two days ago. If you want to check out a historic elf deck, I played one two days ago. Gotta destroy everything first. Oh, destroy. So much for us being concerned about our life total. So that's what our deck can do. It can do some really cool stuff there with Dread Presence and Golos. Dread Presence with um, Helm of the Host is really cool. <laughs> that was wild. Yeah, this is a fun deck. <laughs> Thanks, Equinox. All right, we're one on one. All right, hopefully, hopefully we're playing against Aggro again. Hopefully. They better not just go turn to Oko. Please no Oko. Please no Oko. Uh Well darn. 
Open your heart to the this is why we have all the, the disfigures and duresses to try to stop that, but... And all your cares are gone. GG. I mean, my... I mean, I can... I can play Karn... In, like, two turns, I can play Karn and grab Spyglass and then Spyglass Oko. Like, that's, that's my only way to get rid of this Oko right now. In my hand. We could also just draw Murderous Rider. That would be a lot cleaner, a lot easier. Hopefully we draw Murderous Rider. <laughs> Hello, Oko, my old friend. I don't have too many answers to Oko in the main deck, so like upkeep scry isn't isn't gonna be very good. I, I really need to just draw Murderous Rider and I need my three mana, so I'm not gonna upkeep scry. Wow. So good. So good this game. Alright, they better not have another one of those. No moss. No Masoko. Alright, now we need to draw land and ritual set. Kill this 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. Alright, we'll take Nissa before they can play it next turn. I don't know, I wish they would have just Assassin's Trophy'd my treasure map. Would rather have had to land, but... We'll take the Stronghold. So they'll still have this 3-1, but we can uh, we can make the Brazen Borrower cry next turn. Puts us down to 6. I don't really like how we're, our life total is just a multiple of 3. When my opponent can have Okos and Nissas and stuff like that. More brazen borrowers. Ugh, come on. Flash is good. Flash is good. Hey, LeBeau, it's going really well. If, you know, without Flash, we would have been able to kill the other one with the Ritual of Set, kill this one with the Cry of the Carnarium. Not taking all this damage. So I have to use Murderous Rider even though I don't want to. I'd rather use this on a Planeswalker. So I I don't really imagine us winning this game with them having Phyrexian Arena in play. We'll have to get really, really lucky. <laughs> yeah, Ruinous Blast would have been nice. Exile these. Let's get the Life Linkers in play.
Opponent's lame. Ugh. I'm sorcery speed, opponent's instant speed. I lose. All right, one and two. We top deck the murderous rider that we needed, which was great, but opponent was just a little too fast being on the play with turn two Oko. Unfortunately, I don't think our Field of Ruin is going to do a whole lot this game. Hmm. So we'll be able to go Mindstone plus Murderous Rider next turn. And then the turn after, if we draw a land, then the turn after we could play Ugin. Alright, alright. But hopefully that just took up their turn. Ah, they found a land. I did not find a land, but I found a Golos. I was probably going to just go Karn minus to go grab a Golos. Oh, no. Ooh, no attacks. Um, This doesn't add any mana yet. We need one more. Do not defy the disruption. Bathe in ghost fire. One more swamp before that adds mana. Well, we killed a Torbrand and we're still at 16. So that's a good sign. Everything's obviously a lot more expensive with Ugin out of here, but it's just it's just the thing to do. Just kill the Torbrand. Right, I'd really like to draw a Swamp. Yay! Because now we get to... Now we have enough to go Karn and go grab another. I battled with the forces of good for Fencer. Go grab another Golos. Block and ramp. <clears throat> and there we go. We did not have enough to do that if we would have just drawn a normal land. Or no land. Mindstone was really good there, helping us ramp. <coughs> yeah, Mindstone was awesome. Speeding us up. Disfigure was real good. Being on the play was really good. All right, let's see how Phyrexian Arena is. Uh-oh. All right, so we have a bunch of Amulet of Safekeepings in our sideboard. If this is Field of the Dead, which that's my expectation. 
But I guess it's possible it's not Field of the Dead. It does not seem like Field of the Dead anymore. Team Rawakas. We begin. <laughs> Alright, good time for a ritual of set deck. Thank you. I will call the dragons. Ow. Gotta stay at a high enough life total. Kinda wanna play the Karn here. But Golos is better to play. Karn would help me save a lot of life. If I grab Swamp, and then we play Swamp again next turn, we'd have six. So we'd have nine, we'd have nine mana. If I grab Cabal Stronghold and then we play Swamp, we have um, five and then tap that for seven, eight, nine. I guess it's the same. But then just later on, we'll just get more mana. I think it's still nine this way, right? Come to me. That's five minus two plus, yeah. So it should still be nine. I will defend my allies. True goodness can never be corrupted. I only have five mana. I mean, I want, obviously, I want Meteor Golem. You can do stuff. I lead the way. First Strike Trample. Come you on. Alright, that's fine. I can kill that thing. Ow. No, I just have the Stream Decker site. Set Siri. That's it there. Um. Gotta play this before the land, but I get less mana then. Alright, well this Phyrexian Arena has been pretty good. Let us draw all these cards. Yeah, this deck's really fun to play. It's not like one of the best decks in the format, but this is a really fun deck to play.
Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I could have just shot. I could have just shot the one one and then Legion's end the other thing. I wasn't really planning on Legion's ending. I was kind of planning on spyglassing the Royal Scions and changed my mind while I was going through that. So, yeah, I could still have that one disfigure, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, the Frexian Arena with the um with the life gain with the dread presence. Um you know, works really well, but the problem is you don't always have the dread presence, of course. Um don't always have that. Okay. I guess I should just play the land first. Recklessness and fear are the seeds of disaster. Play Helm of the Host. Equip this thing. There we go. All right, three and two. Let's see what we got this time. All right, so yeah, if we're playing against a creature deck, this double disfigure is going to be awesome. If we're playing against control uh, that's not playing creatures, we're probably going to lose. So that's that's what we got. Oh, Phyrexian Arena is awesome because this is a, a great card against non-creature decks. Double Temple of Triumph. Like This could be Feather. It is Feather. Alright, well, while we know this is going to resolve, let's use the Murderous Rider. Well, we know that's resolving. Hmm. I could try to Dread Presence, do two damage to the Burning Prophet, and then disfigure Burning Prophet, but obviously God's Willing would save it. But trading a disfigure for a God's Willing is probably a good trade for us. Gave, gave them some options of use a mana. Ooh. 
Reckless Rage. Hmm. Guess we can tempt again while while we know that their God's willing shields are down. Yeah, so two feathers down. Uh, this is this is acting really poorly, performance wise. I'm hoping it's not too bad for y'all. All right, now we're we're back to normal. Just went through a little spike there. Triple Defiant Strike. Huh. They scry to the top. But I guess it wasn't good enough. So Phyrexian Arena was amazing there also. So that's twice where Phyrexian Arena has just been amazing. It's kind of seeming like we should have three Phyrexian Arena, two treasure map. Oh, they might have, oh, yeah, they might have just scried another Burning Prophet to the top. Because they're like, okay, well, this one's going to die. We need another threat, and it's another Burning Prophet. But then then they realized the Legion's End was going to exile it. That could have happened. Huh. Yet another Feather. Maybe better just to disfigure this thing. Legion's End lets us see their whole hand and everything, though. But disfigures doesn't kill, like, other stuff. Besides that. Uh-oh. Alright, we need land. Oh, no. Well, I didn't take the God's Willing. This is probably bad. They had to draw exactly untapped white source and then also me draw non-land. That had to happen, and that did happen. Unfortunately. All right, so we're still good. Well, I guess that card works. I was going to be able to just Liliana make them sacrifice the feather. That card's good against God's Willing, too. Alright, so they get to, you know, of course, draw a card, but then not use their Defiant Strike, but... Let us 
us march into battle and make new comrades. Yeah, what are the odds of a, a third Boros deck next match? I don't know. Pro seems like 100% right now. I probably shouldn't have kept this. Ugin. Uh, definitely should not have kept the Ugin. <laughs> Good health is easy to find in war. When he lands. You know, whenever they're defying, defiant striking your creatures, you're doing pretty good. You do not have hmm. to fight alone. Nothing to get with a, a Johnny. Look how far. <laughs> All right, so they've just given up. They're willing to do that. There is a peaceful solution. Yeah, the opponent strikes me as the defiant type. They want to do things their own way. <laughs> Alright, we're five and two. Oh, I guess that's five and two. We usually just do seven games with the best of one decks. But this is a donation deck. Let's let's get another one in there. Let's at least make it an hour video. Let's get one more in here. Yeah, we're we're just gonna play one more match, so I won't reset the I won't take the time to reset the client. We'll do it after the match. <laughs> Chat saying why why kill the Johnny? They could buff our creatures more. Adam's laughing about how I used the walkers before attacking for lethal. Sakrasa, you need to put Garrick in the deck so we can get more 2-2 two -two pumping walkers. 2-2s two are great. Hello. Oh no. Don't have turn 2 Oko, please. Yay, not turn 2 Oko. Well, no, maybe turn 2 Oko. Yay. All right, this looks like this could just be a mono green ramp. That's what we could have here. That's what it's looking like. Ooh, Fauna Shaman. That card's cool. Card's cool in the graveyard. So you don't know this card. So if I let them untap with Fauna Shaman, then they can discard any creature that they have and then search their library for any creature and put it into their hand. A very powerful effect. Yeah, this is looking like an elf deck. Could just be some kind of green ramp deck. Yeah, this is looking maybe just like mono green elves. You know, get some Beast Whisper, Vanquisher's Banner, that kind of stuff.
They have eight mana for creatures right here because of castle and this. I could have, of course, just had contempt for the incubation druid. Alright, likely Beast Whisperer. Alright, so it's elves. No duress. I want land. Land, please. Ugh. Not the best of lands. Undo. <laughs> so used to watching Todd on YouTube, I was going to tap in the future. Awesome. So I have number one magic stream right now. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. We're having a good Saturday. We're playing some fun decks today. We're, we're going to be going back to standard after this with Chandra Tribal. That should be a fun one to play. I guess they may have like another like finale here, you know, and just kind of thinking through all the options. Oh yeah, that's also kind of a tough choice whether to just throw down a Tulsa or not. So I want to get more swamps in play because of this Cabal Stronghold. I'm casting Ritual of Soot. I think I will just... I think we'll use a treasure also. To flip that thing. So now I can pair um, Cry the Cranarium with Dread Presence to kill the Tulsimer. Remember, we gotta keep our life total high because this is Phyrexian Arena. So they just play one big creature. I can also Liliana Minus. Okay, good card. Good play, good play. Solid. Um, I think this will work. Maybe it won't, though. Maybe this doesn't work. That's five... No, I'm one off. Of going Dread Presence, Land, Cry. Um, I'll just play this thing. Warrior Queen Necromancer has a nice ring to you. Oh, I do love a good death whale. I'll save the swamp for the Dread Presence. Yeah, I could have sacked a token, I guess. Don't really need to, though. <laughs> Rest. 
rise and shine. And I could have sacked the token to get go to play Golos here. Storm count. Yeah, near Beast. Yeah, we're talking about that. I'm, I'm planning this this weekend for, um, you know, with the Black Friday Cyber Monday sales. I'm going to be buying a new computer. Got it. Got stuff picked out. So yeah, we'll, we're getting a new computer this next week. All right. So six and two. So we saw if like the performance updates they talked about, if it helped, it didn't, it's it's the computer. No more getting around it. We need to get a new computer. I'll be yeah, I'll be building it myself. I'll have somebody that knows how to build it. Uh, talk me through building it. But anyway, so there we go. There's mono black control. Well what we really saw there is we saw a lot of, of small creature decks, and we saw that our deck did did very well against the small creature decks. You know, the Disfigures, Legion's End. Disfigure was awesome. Legion's End, Cry, Ritual of Soot, that kind of stuff. We did very good there. And then, of course, like that's like our early game. Then in the the mid and late game, Dread Presence just really took over. This card was just incredible for us, you know, getting all that extra damage in and everything. Phyrexian Arena looked really, really good. Um, I think I would... It looks good enough that I think I would want to play a third. The thing is, is again, if you draw two, you probably don't want to go like turn three arena, turn four, play another arena, because that that could just kill you too quickly. So that's the thing is, if you draw a second one, it's going to kind of be a dead card. But then again, if you draw a second one, if you already have the one in play, you're probably going to draw a lot of cards over over the game, so it's okay to have one dead card, um, kind of thing. Um. But yeah, again, this was the this was the best of one version, as we talked about. Um, for best of three, again, I have I have the link down below for this. Hey, Nadiba, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. So we got even even more stuff against the the creature decks with the extra disfigure, Legion's End, and extra Ritual of Sight. Um, we got the fourth duress for all of the the deck decks that duress is good against. Um, a couple Noxious Grasp for your Oko decks, a couple Ashiox for Field of the Dead, and Kethis combo. So for both of those decks, a couple Ashiox. And then we still have, you know, like some, so we have some artifacts to go grab with Karn, but just, you know, not 15 artifacts to go grab with Karn. Um, but there we go. So that's Mono Black Control. Still looking pretty sweet. And Phyrexian Arena, awesome card. Uh, the Mind Stone was really good that one game, too, of just ramping us ramping us up, helping us get to Ugin earlier. Um, yeah, it did, it did really well. And flipping treasure maps was good. We had, like, the one game where we used just where we just used, like, our six treasures as mana um, after we flipped the treasure maps and really got to pull ahead uh, after using all that mana with treasure maps. So just a fun deck here. Fun deck. All right, um, so if you're watching the video later on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Also, of course, leave some comments. Um, I always like seeing those. And then, of course, I hope you check out the Patreon page as well if you would like to help support my videos. It's just $3 a month over on Patreon. It's free to sign up. You get charged the first of the month. And uh, you can see just some written content over there and also just help support my uh, all my YouTube videos and stuff. So there's a link down below to the Patreon. Hope you check that out as well. All right, but that's it here for Mono Black Control. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.